Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On this episode of General Hospital, Olivia spends time with Cody, Michael tells Jason he can't stay at the boathouse any longer, and Brooke Lynn starts to second-guess her plans for deception. Sasha finds it absurd that she must appear less innocent at deception, and although she is open to altering her appearance, she won't go for a dark or enigmatic aspect. Lucy complains that Belpo was a big thing, but Maxie points her that other magazines exist. Lucy claims that Belpo is the jewel in the crown of magazines, and that Sasha should be on the cover of this one just like every other. As a model, Sasha is accustomed to people critiquing her appearance, but in the last year, she has come to the realization that there are more worthwhile goals than being paid to be seen. Maxie proposes that they put off having this conversation until later. Lucy declines, and Sasha promises they'll settle this right away. According to Lucy, they cannot ignore this, and it must be resolved if they are to have any chance of preserving their business and reputation. Brooke Lynn says, Pardon me? What company is this? Lucy is reminded by Brooke Lynn that Tracy owns the bulk of this business, therefore any discussion regarding altering the appearance of deception must go via her grandma. This, according to Maxie, is the reason she suggested they take a break and that they wouldn't do anything worthwhile. Lucy screams that she founded this business and that she owns a larger share of it than anyone else. If there is an issue, she will resolve it. If Brooke Lynn objects, the door will remain open. Lucy informs Sasha that she is aware that she has sacrificed blood, sweat, and tears for this enterprise. Sasha believes she's over this whole thing, even though she knows she has and cares about the firm. As the public face of deceit, she steps down. She is urged to reconsider by Brooke Lynn and Maxie, since deception requires her. Thanking them, Sasha explains that it's time. Lucy believes that a second face of deception will provide her with the much-needed break and opportunity to relax. Brooke Lynn informs Lucy that no matter how many new faces she recruits, she will also fire them because that isn't why she recommended the second face, and they are all aware of this. Brooke Lynn bolts from the room. Lucy queries Sasha. Is that accurate? Is she the reason she's leaving? Sasha claims she isn't and never intended to work as a model. She claims that Michael arranged that arrangement so she could own stock in the business, and she has changed since then. Although she is unsure of her life's purpose, she is certain that she does not want to be directed in front of numerous cameras. Lucy draws attention to the fact that she will forfeit her leadership role and shares in the company in accordance with their contract if she resigns. Lucy claims she is simply being honest, but Maxie believes she has already done enough. Lucy claims that if she waits, she won't get very much at all because she will have to sell her shares back at market value, and the shares are currently very low. Sasha claims that since Gladys purged her, anything she receives will be greater than what she already has and that happiness is irreplaceable. Maxie asks Lucy, what in the hell is wrong with her? As Sasha departs. Tracy can't resist Lucy at this point, she explains, because they still have Blaze as their ace in the hole. Blaze might not be interested, according to Maxie. But if she were, who would be her manager again? Lynn Brooks. Lucy will make this right because she knows Blaze will be intrigued by them. Maxie informs Lucy that she is a one-woman wrecking ball that does whatever she wants and not a partner. Maxie asks, unable to even look at her at the moment, what it has cost her to stay with her. Lucy is told to leave her office by her. Lucy nods and walks away. Chase discusses police work with Donna's students at the station. When Brooke Lynn shows there, Don swears in all of the children to be honorary deputies and formal pals of the Port Charles Police Department. When the instructor dismisses the children, Brooke Lynn tells Chase that he was precisely what she needed, so lovely at that precise moment. Chase believed she was today at deception. According to Brooke Lynn, she took a break since Lucy had caused another catastrophe. Few people, in his opinion, can truly connect with Lucy, so he questions whether returning to deception was the correct move. 
Since everything is becoming worse, she is starting to second-guess her choice and even her intention to give Maxie deception. Chase believes that Maxie is fortunate to have her as a friend. But Brooklyn worries that if Lucy continues on this path, there might not be any businesses left to give to Maxie. Chase is confident that she can manage Lucy Co. Cody tells the horse at the quarter main stables that he has decided to give up on deception. He rants about how pointless modeling is, but he didn't consider Sasha and Maxie's reaction to his resignation. Olivia arrives to inform Cody that Dante is the same as she was when she left the hospital, and because she was unable to unwind, she decided to make him some lunch. She adds that she could use the peace and quiet that exists down here right now. Olivia tells Cody that her food smells amazing and that it was calming to finally help someone. He extends an invitation to have dinner with him, and she says yes. Olivia immediately starts to doubt herself and feels that she ought to be by Don's side. She can't handle it, but Cody assures her that she has been a superhero through it all and that Dante will overcome. Cody remembers how good Dunt was at earning badges throughout their time at camp. Olivia decides to return to the hospital after he helps her to laugh and relax for a little while. He thanks her for lunch, and she thanks him for lifting her spirits. Later, Sasha appears to inform Cody that she, too, fled deception. He wishes he hadn't coerced her into it. Sasha claims that because she needed a change, she did this for her. Cody queries her about her financial security. Sasha claims to have paid all of her expenses and that she will consider her options. Does Cody always know what he wants to do with his life? She asks. Cody claims not to have, but he is aware that a career in a suit and tie was never meant for him. Does he ever worry about his next job? She asks. He claims that although there was worry, he felt free because he could travel any place. He enjoys his job here and his buddies, but that life isn't for him anymore. He claims that the money he received from modeling has allowed him to pursue new aspirations. Sasha is eager to pursue a new career since she is certain that one exists for her. Michael stops at the boathouse to see about Jason. Michael observes that he is moving more fluidly and that he is feeling better. Jason feels that Michael is not feeling well. Jason is told by Michael that he must go. Liz would have been the one to take responsibility for the situation Willow found herself in when she took drugs, as Michael says. He claims that Spinelli cracked the system to make it work, and Jason is aware that he probably knows who the medications were intended for. Jason finds it annoying that so many people are getting involved in this. Michael concurs, saying it's unfair to Willow and their children. Jason admits that he must leave. Michael claims to have figured out how to make him vanish. Jason won't allow him to take the ELQ plane to the Grand Keys when he offers it to him because everything will be linked to Michael. He adds that there will be repercussions if he flees since someone has power over him. Michael queries his plan of action. In response, Jason says, The only thing I can. Robert and Diane meet at the cafe where Diane informs him that she is investigating the possibility of having Alexis' disbarment reversed. She also wants to know why the decision was made so quickly and who was on the committee that made it. She tells him that she made Alexis an offer to work for her company, and that he will be going up against the two of them in court when her license is restored. Robert promises to take them out to supper after he wins. While grinning, she claims to have asked for every favor in order to learn the true reason Alexis was denied. Diane gets a call from Michael, cutting them off. When she moves to talk to him, she discovers it's Jason. She asks what he needs and says she was waiting for his call. Diane returns to the PCPD carrying a client who is willingly giving up. Chase tells Jason his rights as soon as he walks in. Chase says he needs to be booked before Diane can speak with her customer. He takes them to the interrogation room after Diane cites legal precedents in an attempt to have a minute with him before making a reservation. Chase yells at Brooklyn that Jason appears to be in perfect condition while Dante remains unconscious. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.